Unit 7, Part 2, Rooftop Gardening. As with indoor gardens, rooftop gardening isn't new. It's been practiced for nearly as long as there have been buildings with roofs. But we're now sort of rediscovering the many positive aspects of rooftop gardening. And some of those include making use of underutilized space to grow vegetables locally. Rooftop gardens can provide insulation. Rooftop gardens beautify what might otherwise be a really utilitarian space. Rooftop gardens can help absorb, ra absorb rainwater and slow runoff, reducing flooding. And rooftop gardens can reduce the heat island effect in urban areas. Ornamental rooftop gardens are probably at this point the most common type of rooftop garden. Um, sometimes they're simply gardens planted on in containers on roofs. Sometimes they're so-called green roofs. Um, and while this unit is about producing food, it should be noted that ornamental rooftop gardens to provide a lot of those benefits, including beauty, insulation, runoff control, absorbing CO2 and reducing heat. Um, and it's quite easy if you have an ornamental garden to incorporate some food producing plants into a green roof or ornamental rooftop garden. And some food producing plants are also quite ornamental. This is a uh, ornamental roof garden on the roof of Rockefeller Center in New York. Uh, if you couldn't see across the street and realize that you're halfway up those buildings, um, you wouldn't necessarily even know that you were on a roof. This is uh, the rooftop garden at Chicago City Hall. It's uh, one of the most extensive green roofs uh, in the country. And it's primarily ornamental in nature, but there are also beehives on the roof of uh, City Hall that produce hundreds of pounds of honey each year. Growing vegetables on the roof. This is a photograph of a woman watering tomato plants on a rooftop garden in Berlin. And the idea of growing edible plants on a roof isn't new. So what are the issues? Probably the single largest issue with rooftop gardens is providing the proper soil. Again, we need to be cognizant that typical garden soil isn't proper for contained areas like containers or rooftop gardening. And sometimes simply getting access to the roof for people and tools can be an issue. Safety is a consideration as rooftops um, that weren't initially designed to be used often have no safety features such as railings. And many rooftops were not designed to have people walking over them and may need to be redesigned to prevent leaks, especially if the growing mix is going to be placed directly on the roof. There are issues with soil on the rooftop. Regular garden soil is quite heavy, and when it absorbs water, it gets even heavier, increasing in weight many, many times. The roof structure has to be extremely strong to support the weight of even one foot of wet soil. So for this reason, most rooftop gardens use some type of containers with very lightweight growing mix, often containing no real soil, and which drains readily so excess weight can be gotten rid of quickly. Rapid drainage is good for keeping weight from building up on the roof, but it means that some regular irrigation will probably be required to keep plants healthy. Now remember we talked about reducing flooding by slowing runoff, even though this material uh, used for growing mix on rooftop gardens um, drains rapidly, it still drains much, much more slowly than a solid roof from which water just sheets off. So even this type of mixture has an effect in slowing down runoff. So the access considerations. Most rooftops have some means of access, but it's often only a rectangular hatch at the top of a ladder. So when you're setting up a rooftop garden, some means of getting the equipment, growing mix, and supplies to the roof needs to be provided, preferably with regular stairs or even an elevator rather than a ladder. However, for a lot of this stuff, it's only the beginning portion 
of getting the containers or the materials up there, um, afterwards it might be possible to use the hatch and ladder system for regular access and maintenance. Safety considerations. Most municipalities have strict regulation about safety features required when people use exposed elevated spaces like balconies or rooftops. Usually railings are required with a spacing of openings between the pickets or panels being less than six inches and the railings themselves being around 30 inches or more high. So it may be required that the rooftop be retrofitted with sufficient safety railings. Um, and when that happens, you have to be cognizant of the cost of installing or updating the safety features. Um, there are also regulations very often regarding placing lightweight or freestanding items on a roof, which might be blown off by wind and fall, fall into the streets or sidewalks below. Um, so we need to be cognizant of what we're placing up there and the potential for it to be blown off. The wind on top of a 10 or 20 story building is almost always much stronger than it is at ground level. And this becomes a really important safety issue the taller you go. Pedestrian traffic. Most rooftops aren't designed to have people walking on them all the time. Um, they might provide access to workers to work on HVAC units and other things via small walkways uh, to help keep foot traffic from causing leaks because a lot of these roofs are a uh, membrane, older roofs often just tar paper um, with tar placed over the top of it to seal it up uh, and need to be careful to not cause leaks. So. Sometimes upgrading the entire roof and the roofing material and possibly the structure of the roof to support the foot traffic and bear weight is necessary. It's not always, but it's sometimes required and that can be a substantial expense. So methods of rooftop gardens? Well, typically in three ways. In containers, which would include hydroponics and aquaponics. In a growing mix placed directly on the roof, that's the way the Chicago City Hall is done, or in greenhouses, again inside either in containers or mixed directly on the roof. Um, by far the most popular method is using containers and many green roofs, which appear to be solid masses of uh, growing mix and plants, are actually built using special sectional containers that fit together. So it gives the appearance of plants growing directly in the soil on the roof. Containers on the rooftop. We've discussed growing in containers already. So we don't need to recap all of that, but we do know, we do need to know that maybe some additional info is required when we're putting these things on rooftops. You need to know the weight bearing capabilities of the rooftop you're working on. And that may, entail having a structural engineer examine the property and give a report. The containers and growing mix should be as lightweight as possible, especially if the garden is going to be extensive. And most roofs that support HVAC equipment have water outlets available for cleaning filters and other uses, but it's necessary to make sure you have the irrigation capacity required. And that's true whether it's containers or not. Some more container issues, of course. If you use very lightweight growing mix and lightweight containers, it's easier for them to become top heavy with certain types of plants. So we need to provide some means of support to make sure the containers remain upright. Rooftops, as I mentioned, are subjected to higher wind speeds than at ground level. And so securing the containers and tools is usually necessary for safety to make sure they can't be blown over the edge. Plants growing into containers with a lightweight mix may not be as secure in the container, and the plant can be blown over even if the container remains upright. So sometimes uh, with tall, upright plants, small trees, or even uh, tomato plants, for instance, you need some means of supporting the plant above the container, and that support method 
should probably be integrated into the design of the garden. Growing mix directly on the roof? Well, in some situations, it might be possible to place the growing mix directly on the roof and grow plants without containers. Um, but since the mix is lightweight or should be lightweight, you have to take care to make sure it won't blow away in high winds. Um, that might mean just a top dressing with a heavier mix or covering it with some type of fabric or netting until the plants themselves can cover the whole area. Um, ensure the growing mix can drain adequately, both for rate considerations and to prevent it becoming waterlogged because the roof is, or at least it should be, impervious to water. So wherever there are drains on the roof, we need to work a way to incorporate that to allow the uh, growing mix to drain through those areas. Rooftop greenhouses. So weight can also be an issue with greenhouses, especially those covered in glass rather than a type of plastic. And wind is also a consideration with greenhouses. They need to be securely anchored to the roof to prevent them from blowing over and possibly falling off the building and possibly shattering glass and raining shards of glass or sharp plastic down below. So we need to consider the weight bearing ability of the roof as well as the possibility of creating leaks when, bu when building and securing a greenhouse to the roof. Um, consider reinforcing walkways that will receive a lot of foot traffic. Um, one thing that might be possible here is to extend the walkway put the so that the entire floor of the greenhouse is essentially a walkway, have a small walkway to and from the greenhouse. That way there's minimal work that needs to be done on other parts of the roof. So to recap, it can be very practical, practical, but some considerations not associated with other methods must be taken into account. The safety aspects of being up on a roof, the weight bearing capability of the roof, providing adequate drainage for your containers or your growing mix from the roof, and providing access for workers and equipment that aren't usually associated with rooftops. We don't think of people taking shovels and rakes and things like that up on a rooftop, um, and many of them aren't designed for that. So there we have it, and that concludes Unit 7.